gaining full visibility of your user behavior is simply key in order to build an awesome product, to build a marketing funnel that converts, because otherwise you just, you're just flying blind, you're doing social media and ad campaigns and SEO, but you don't know what is happening afterwards. So in the video before this, in the series, we talked about how this applies to ad campaigns. Let's now take a look on what we want to track and how we can track lots of user interaction and, and how that can helps us, help us to become a better marketer. So at the very beginning, we took a look at our case study of Monday Rocks and, and took a look at the landing page. Let's just review that landing page for a moment. So uh, we, we have this big landing page that is zoomed out a little bit and we have a navigation menu where we would be interested in knowing which one of the navigation items are people most interested in clicking. So why do we care? Because navigation space is scarce and we only want to keep navigation items in there that are being used properly. If they are not being used, why have them in there? I've seen so many overcrowded items and so, so why do it? Or the, the language switcher, does it really need to be there in the top right corner? If it's not being used, fine. If it's being used, good, then, then it has been well placed. And then there is a big call to action, test the app and a small call to action, login. So, and I always wanna know what is being clicked, how often. Yes, you can use Hotjar or other tools that help you to do better click tracking and heat maps uh, to realize that. But it also helps to have them in Google Tag Manager to create conversion events based on that, that can inform my ad campaigns or inform my product team. And I would put Hotjar on this website through Google Tag Manager. So what else do I wanna track? I wanna track, of course, this button click. I wanna track all of them. I, I want to track everybody who scrolled down like 25, 50, 70, 100% down. And I wanna see what happens after that. So as I mentioned before, I want to track the element visibility of the pricing uh, section here. And I want to see how far people can get yeah, on there. And if they're interested in, in my imprint or data privacy policies and everything that happens after the primary click. Why, why do I want to do this? So again, usually you don't build a landing page. People suddenly show up and they all make appointments with you. Reality is that you are going to have a bottleneck. And in the beginning, you don't know where the bottleneck is. Is it maybe not enough traffic? Is it the engagement on the landing page? Is it the final conversion? Is something broken? We don't know, but usually we don't build landing pages and suddenly everything works. So um, this behavior tracking has the biggest benefit on me if it, if it recognizes bottlenecks shows it to me which makes the data very actionable and i can then focus the effort of my user experience team or maybe my own conversion rate optimization efforts on this bottleneck uh, this has become by far the, the most important technique for me i always visualize um, the user flow like a, like a system and there are places where the pipe gets really thin and I have to start to widen it there. And analytics help me to see that people are struggling in this area. And it also gives me ideas for improvements. Let's say um, I, I see that people are clicking on the appointments, but they are not creating the appointments. Maybe the date picker and the available time slots are just not convenient for the, for the people in the audience or it's too complicated. I just, I just get idea when I look at the data, the data um, that I get through Google Analytics to all of the other tracking tools I like to use. To me, like events are so much more important than page views. Uh, page views simply tell you, oh, somebody landed on my landing page, but not what they actually did. And you can see in this example that uh, on this landing page, it, it's also from Monday Rocks, um, you can see how many people in the time frame I've picked have um, scrolled down, how far they have scrolled down. You can see that only 50% get, get to the 25 point mark, but only 24% get to the middle of the landing page. So if I know that, maybe I can shorten the landing page. I can focus my testing efforts on 
uh, on fewer folds, maybe I draw other conclusions, yeah? And I can see how many people click on the header. And, and this helps me so much to then go back to the landing page and consider like, ah, what to do, what not. And Google Tag Manager just provides us a shit ton of trigger types that already make you think of, oh yeah, I, I want to create this type of event, this type of event, and this type. And I want to show you those trigger types in Google Tag Manager because they will show you again the power of such a tool um, that you can replace with many others. But here, I think the integrations that just come with Google Tag Manager are one of the strongest arguments for it. A native integration with the complete Google world, uh, their new template templates um, for tags and triggers. It, it, it's very well established. Yeah? So, you see at the top, so this is where you land up when you want to create a new trigger in Google Tag Manager. We talked about that in the video before. So let's say we want to create a trigger um, for, for just our generic Facebook pixel, Google pixel uh, for the page view. Then we just pick the already prepared auto event trigger page view. Uh, it's a convenience feature that when a person um, has went to your website and the whole page is loaded, and as you can see, there are different definitions and phases of a page view that you can target, um, that you can use. But usually the page view on a normal, um, not single page application, this is the right thing to do. Yeah, you can just use it and then put in your basic pixels like the Google and Facebook pixel and it will fire the page view. What is more interesting are events like, like clicks and um, clicks on elements and link clicks. So, all of those things are pretty much, um, they're being understood as, as listeners. They are listening for events that users are doing on your website. So an illusion that many people are having is that only stuff is being tracked that, that we made explicit. But how, how is the browser showing me the cursor and the exact position of the cursor if if not everything is being tracked every single pixel that is being shown is being tracked and and you you get to that understanding when you start using for example the all elements click thing then you see how that everything is already clicked so this listener tracked this event listener is just making it more visible and accessible to us as marketers and product people. If you go for all elements, then every single element on your page, the background, any image, every button, everything can now be clicked. And, and you, can, you can track those clicks, but you usually want to do a filter, like only button clicks or only images or only videos. And you can do that here, but it is done for you. Doing that custom is hard work. So then, uh, you can see the user engagement category, element visibility. If, if an element, for example, with a certain CSS class, like, um, like a pricing section is visible, you want to say, yeah, oh yeah, that, that is an interesting event. That is a user achievement on that journey or the visibility of a form field or a contact form or something like that, um, that I really like to track with element visibility. Form submission is a godsend. Measuring form submissions just with Google Analytics installed without Google Tag Manager is usually pretty hard uh, because there is no way without custom JavaScript to, to, to send the checked form submission event if the person stays on the same page. This is why I recommend that when somebody submits a form, I usually send them to a thank you page, which makes the whole tracking affair a lot easier. But with Google Tag Manager, you get you get built-in auto event triggers like like the form submission, and there is some sophistication to form submissions, yeah, because you have to be careful if the form is not completely finished, will it still fire or not? But this is more like for the intermediate level. Then scroll depth done for you. How far did people scroll? And you decide on the level of detail if you want to do 10% step, 1% steps, or 25% steps, as I like to do. It's all up to you. Then of course, YouTube videos, Google Tag Manager and YouTube, they are from the same company. And you'll be able to see how many people started, how long they watched the video, when they stopped, when they completed. And this might be interesting, 
if you are showing a video on your website that is being um, handled by YouTube. And then the crazy area is all of the custom events. You can fire anything into Google Tag Manager that a user does or that happens in the back end. You don't even need user interaction. You can use events that are being fired through the back end without the user engagement, or you can set timers, wait for 15 seconds, and then fire this pixel. This is helpful, for example, when you want to create lookalike audiences on Facebook, but you don't want to include the people who bounced off the website right away. You only want to include the people who, for example, have at least two page views or remain 15 seconds on your website, and you want to create a lookalike on this a little bit more exclusive page view group. And this is what, what I really like. Or you can trigger stuff like a chat window a little bit later through Google Tag Manager. I really like it. The history change is incredibly helpful if you have a single page application and you don't have different URLs or you have a form uh, that is a multi-step form, but it all stays on the same page view, then history change is usually what helps me uh, to still get to see all of the different changes in the pages. But let's not get too deep into that. If you're already familiar with that, you know what you're doing. Um, but it is very interesting to know that you're able to do it. And a new, new, one of the newest features is trigger groups that helps you to combine certain triggers. So let's say a person clicked a call to action and stayed on the page for 15 seconds and uh, has seen the pricing page. Now they get to see a pop-up from your customer support chat and otherwise they won't see it. They won't be annoyed by it. So you can, you can really group those triggers together and, and create rules that way. As, to me, that is absolutely fantastic. So what are my, my, my standard events that I pretty much always like to set up? All the important clicks, form submits, 100%, scroll events, 25, 50, 75, 100, element visibility for key elements, and timers, 15 seconds, 60 seconds, three minutes, something like that. Yeah? Um, and, and those are just for you like a checklist. Did, did I implement the basics? I think the... The top three ones, they are the most important ones for me. Now this concludes the, the main parts, like why you should do it, how to use it for ad campaigns, how to use it for user behavior. But the journey with Google Tag Manager is at the very beginning. Yeah, it is, it is incredible how deep you can go there. And I want to show you in the next video um, the, the different learning levels and where you should maybe stop because you won't get much more out of the, the deeper stuff. So you save a lot of time, I hope. So see you in that next video.